Hi, this is Laura Rogers, and I'm going to show you a solution on how to use SharePoint content types as a uh, status field, as a status drop down. And this solution uses no code and no SharePoint designer and is applicable in SharePoint 2007 and 2010. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, we have a patient list in this example and there are three different statuses associated with each patient. You have new admissions and then there, then there are current patient and then they're going to be a discharge. So those are the three sort of stages they go through. So for each patient I'm able to change their status so when they when they start off they're in admissions and they have these certain fields to fill out and then when they're a current patient they have some different fields to fill out that, that show up, like doctor and room number and things like that. And then when they're a discharge, they have different required fields and different fields that show on here, such as their discharge date and where they're being discharged to. So this drop, configuring this drop-down box to do what I just showed you is what this demo is about. So I've already put this together. I'm going to keep this demo short. Um, you know, this could take a long time if I was creating it all from scratch right now. But I'm going to show you how I did each of these steps real quick. And I also wrote a blog that actually walks you through everything. So I went to Site Actions and Site Settings, and I go to the Site Content Types screen. So I've created these content types. I started off by creating this um, Case Management All Content Type, which is like it's going to be set up as the parent content type. So when I click create, I you know create it as case management all. And then I'm going to use the parent for this for this case management all is going to be just a regular list item. And then I'm going to create a new custom group called case management. That way, when, e when I create each of these new content types, they're automatically going to display in this grouping called case management. So the parent for this case management all is just a regular list item. But then I create each of these three other uh, content types, and their parent is this case management all. So then for these other three, when I click create, I give them a name, and I, I get put case management and case management all as the parent. And then I put each of them in this group that I created when I created that very first content type. So then I have these four case management content types that are empty. Well, the next step is to create site columns to be able to put into each of these content types. And then on site settings, I go to site columns and I'm going to create all these new site columns that I'm going to put into the new content types. So, for example, one of them is discharge date, make it a date field. And then um, for the first one that I create, I'm going to create a new group called case management here. And then for all the other new site columns, they'll be able to fall into the case management group that I created on the first one. So you're creating a grouping when you create the site uh, content types and then a grouping for the site columns. And then I just, this is all just pretty standard. I configure the date field however I want to. So then after I've created all of these site, site columns, they're going to show in this grouping called case management. It's just kind of important to remember as you go through creating these to remember to put them in that case management group because um, I'll show you why in a second. So all these uh, uh, just regular site columns have been created and the next step is to associate them with the site content type. So I'll go back over here to site content types and I go to the parent one first. So I start with case management all. So what I want to do is it's going to be empty. So the first thing I do is add from existing site columns and then this is why we created the grouping because it makes it easy to just pick that case management group. I've already added them all in this, you know, this example I've already done this, but the case manager group is going to show in this grouping and then once it's there you'll be able to select all the ones that in that grouping and add them all by clicking this add button. So once you add them all at the parent content type level they'll show here and then 
once you've added them on the parent, they also automatically all show in all three of these other content types. You know, think about this in like many different situations. Any kind of list that you have that has any kind of different status level where different things need to happen at different stages. This graphic will hopefully explain to you a little bit about uh, what I'm referring to when, I, when I'm talking about putting the site columns into the site content types. So here are three content types displayed admission, you're then a current patient, and then your discharge. So then these are all of the site columns that we created and we're going to need to organize these into which site content types they belong in depending on what needs to happen at each different status of that list item of that patient. So first we have the admit date, so where does it go? We need the admit date when we're doing an admission, and then we also still need it when uh, the person is a current patient. So then within each content type, we can then determine whether it's required. So it's, re it's a required field when it's not, what's an admission, but then it's just the default of optional when they're a current patient. The next stat in the next field, so we're gonna go through each field. The next field is gonna be case manager. Well, that field is actually going to exist just as optional in each different content type. We're not, don't worry, I'm not gonna do every single field in this demo, I'm just kind of showing you how it works. <laughs> and then the next one is discharge date. It goes under current patient, and then it also goes under discharge. And that field is going to be required when, when there the patient is a discharge. So as you can tell, um, those each field gets organized and then each field is determined whether it needs to exist in each content type or whether it's required. So for example, in this very first stage, the admit date is going to be a required field. So to set that as required, I click on admit date and I choose required here and I click OK. And so I go through each of these different new content types and I pick which fields need to be removed and then I picked which uh, different fields need to be required. And so then I can go through and create a new, so I create a new SharePoint list. And then what the thing, next thing to do is to pull all these content types into that SharePoint list. So I create a new SharePoint list and I call it patient list. And then in this patient list settings, I went ahead and clicked add from existing content type. And then I picked that grouping, that case management group, the first thing. So just add case management all first. So that's the parent one that you created. And then click OK. And then go ahead and click Add from Existing Content Types and um, add the other ones. So once you've done that, then you, it's going to show all of your fields. And so the fact that, because of the fact that we removed some of those fields from the different content types, you can see that in this, um, on this page, you can tell just at a quick glance where each of these fields exists. So um, pretty much the last thing to do is to change the new button order. So you can, you know, ch rearrange these, change the, their positions. Um, and you can actually remove that parent content type from the list after you've added everything to it. Um, that's optional. You can also just uncheck it. You don't have to remove it. So um, let me click cancel. So then the end result is what I showed you in that um, you can edit each item. So let's see, we have a new admission, Bob, uh, Jeff Hay. Go ahead and edit him. And then I can go, he's changing over to a current patient. So now that he's a current patient, he's going to have different fields that I need to fill out. So thank you. And um, if that was too fast and complicated, just read the blog post associated with it. It goes through step by step.